Trezak Show. I'm the Trev. Sweet. Anyway, continuing with retired numbers. And this one's nice. We get another team first. San Jose has decided to jump into the retired numbers game, leaving one team left. And while they are doing, you know, their own thing, they're honoring numbers of the past. I'm sure within a year or two, maybe four or five, <laughs> they'll be ready. But either way, I'm getting completely off topic. So, let's talk about Mr. Shark, the guy who wore number 12 for these San Jose Sharks. That being Patrick Marlowe. Let's do it. So just as a forewarning, there's a lot of career to talk about here. As Marlowe did play 21 of his 23 NHL seasons with the San Jose Sharks. So if you're a fan of content, you're going to love this. I hope I don't bore you along the way. But let's do it either, either way. So Patrick Marlowe's 21-year career with the San Jose Sharks begins on June 21st, 1997, when he is drafted second overall in the 1997 NHL entry draft. Now, I can guarantee you, at some point in this video, we'll be talking about the number one draft pick in the 1997 NHL entry draft that went ahead of Patrick Marlowe, but we'll get to that bridge eventually. Now, on an interesting side note, Marlowe was the youngest player in the 1997 draft class, with his birthday falling on the last day of the NHL draft age cutoff. So he just squeaked in in his eligible year. And Marlowe would make the team straight out of training camp, albeit with the number 24. And he would make his debut for the 97-98 season, which made him the youngest player in NHL history to play in the NHL. And in his rookie campaign, Marlowe had 32 points in 74 games, while also adding one assist in five playoff games. This was his first season, he gets that out of the way, plus his playoff debut. Not a bad start. The 98-99 season would see Marlowe switch up to the number 14, and ultimately improve his stats, putting up 45 points in 81 games, as well as adding four points in six playoff games. The 99-2000 season would pretty much be a carbon copy of the 98-99 season. The only difference, Marlowe would score five less points, putting up 40 points in 81 games, as well as two points in five playoff games. The 2000-2001 season would see Marlowe lead the team in goals with 25 and points with 52 in 81. And despite the Sharks making relatively talked about moves to make themselves Stanley Cup contenders instead of your perennial playoff contender, contenders, such as acquiring Timu Solani, the Sharks would be eliminated in six games, with Marlowe scoring only two goals. The 01 02 season would see Marlowe switch to the more familiar number 12, and it would be a better year for the Sharks, with the team winning their first Pacific Division title in team history with Marlowe adding 44 points in 79 games. And Marlowe would also score his first hat-trick of his career on April 6, 2002 against the Detroit Red Wings. Despite the Sharks being heavily favored to make a deep playoff run, they had the unfortunate pleasure of meeting the Colorado Avalanche in the second round. And while the series did go seven, it didn't necessarily go the Sharks' way, with Marlowe adding 11 points in 12 playoff games. The 0203 season, however, would be a bit of a regression for the San Jose Sharks, as they would miss the playoffs entirely for the first time in five years. Marlowe would for the, for, tie for the team lead in goals with 28 to go with his 57 points in a full 82 game schedule. The 0304 season would see the Sharks institute a rotating captaincy system between four players rotating the sea. But once it landed on Marlowe on January 24, 2004, sorry, it didn't leave for the next five years. Now, this would be the season where Marlowe would also play in his first NHL All-Star game. And also to see the Sharks get back to winning ways, winning another Pacific Division championship, their second in three years. 
with Marlowe leading the team in goals with 28 and replicating his team leading 57 points in 80 games. Now the playoffs. So our Sharks make it all the way to the Western Conference Finals for the first time in team history where they would eventually lose to the Calgary Flames in six games. And Marlowe would contribute 12 points in 17 playoff games. So things are looking up. And then we have the big one. So for the 0405 canceled season, most players went overseas or they played in on the farm or played something. Marlowe stayed inactive. But when the Sharks came back for 0506 and the NHL for that matter, so did Marlowe. And he had himself a year. Marlowe had, would add career highs in assists with 52 and points with 86. Now, a lot of this could be attributed to a lot of rule changes that helped out guys like Marlowe. But a lot more could be attributed to Joe Thornton and the Sharks acquiring him for the, from the Boston Bruins, giving San Jose the number one and number two picks from the 1997 NHL draft for pretty much the remainder of both their careers, mine, give or take a couple years and a couple teams. Marlowe would also have a career high in playoff points with 14 of those, even though the Sharks only lasted 11 games in the 2006 playoffs. Now, for his play during the 05 06 season, Marlowe was named a finalist for Lady Bing Memorial Trophy, which is awarded annually to the most gentlemanly player. Ultimately, Marlowe would lose that, lose that one to Pavel Datsuk. The 06 07 season would see Marlowe break all the franchise records as far as offense is concerned in relatively quick succession of one another. On January 4, 2007, he would break the franchise record in points, beating the mark of 451, which was held by Owen Nolan. A week after that, on January 11th, he would score his 207th career goal, again, breaking the record from Owen Nolan. And not long after that, he would record his 246th career assist, which, again, was an Owen Nolan record. But unlike the first two, this record has since been broken. Now, Marlowe would finish the season with 78 points in 77 games, putting up a point-per-game average for the first time in his career. Now, playoff success, though, still seemed to end at the second round for the Sharks, with Marlowe putting up six points in 11 games. The 07-08 season would see the Sharks win their third Pacific Division title in team history, but more importantly, their first of four in a row with Marlowe adding 48 points in 78 games, a low he hadn't seen since the 0102 season, while adding 8 points in 13 playoff games. And the 0809 season would be a nice rebound for Marlowe, which would see him put up 71 points in 76 games, but more importantly, two notable things happened this season. The first, this would be his last year in 09, where he would play in an NHL All Star game. Now, more importantly, on April 9th, 2009, this would be the start of his 910 consecutive games played. Now, that's nothing to sneeze at. I don't care who you are. 900 games or 900 plus is a lot of hockey to be playing. Straight. Consecutive. <laughs> and, of course, the Sharks did make the playoffs. Their second straight Pacific Division. But they only last six games, with Marlowe adding three points. Now, before the start of the 2009-10 season, Marlowe would be replaced as team captain by Rob Blake, but that didn't really seem to be too much of an issue. As Marlowe took it like a gentleman, and the, the Sharks continued winning their ways, winning another Pacific Division championship, as well as first in the Western Conference. So that's good for playoff time, hopefully. Now, in a full schedule, Marlowe would add 83 points, so another point-per-game production, with a career-high 44 goals. Now, despite their recent playoff history, the Sharks managed to start making some movement in the playoffs by actually making it further than the second round. This year, they get themselves all the way back to the Western Conference Finals for the first time since 2004. 
only to lose to eventual Stanley Cup champs, the Chicago Blackhawks. With Marlowe adding 13 points, including a career best eight goals in the playoffs. And the 10 11 season would see the Sharks clinch the Pacific Division again, with Marlowe adding a team leading 80, 73 points in 82 games, which also included his 1000th NHL game on January 17th, 2011. Now, in doing so, he became the youngest player to reach 1,000 games, all with the same franchise, and the third quickest player to reach 1,000 games. And the playoffs were pretty much a carbon copy of the 2010 playoffs. Sharks making it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, again, for the second straight year, only losing five games to the eventual Stanley Cup finalist Vancouver Canucks, with Marlowe adding 13 points in 18 games. In the 11-12 season, we'll see the Sharks not clinch the playoff or the Pacific Division for the first time in four years, but they still made the playoffs, with Marlowe contributing 64 points in a full schedule while going pointless in five playoff games. And then we had another lockout. Now, this lockout wasn't nearly as bad as the last one. It still managed to send players overseas or to the farm or anywhere just to play, and Marlowe repeated his status from the last lockout, staying relatively inactive. But when the NHL came back, so did he, and they managed to put together a 48-game schedule for the 2012-13 season, with Marlowe contributing 31 points in a full schedule, which included becoming only the second player in league history to open a season with four straight multi-goal games by scoring two goals in each of his first four games while coming one goal short of making it five straight games. So, hell of a thing to get your name right written into as far as the record books is concerned. But again, playoff success, or lack thereof, hasn't changed with Marlowe putting up eight points in 11 playoff games. In the 2013-14 season, would see Marlowe add 70 points in a full schedule. Now, it's worth noting this would be the last time Marlowe would come anywhere near 70 points in the remainder of his career. And the Sharks had high expectations with the season they had for 13-14, finishing five points out of first in the Pacific Division. So, yeah, they made the playoffs, but they lost in seven games to their state rivals, the LA Kings. But there is a positive to all this, as Marlowe would be named Lady Bing finalist for the second time in his career, only to lose that award to Ryan O'Reilly. The 2014-15 season, however, would see the Sharks miss the playoffs entirely. For the first time in 12 consecutive years, with Marlowe adding 57 points in a full 82 games. The 15-16 season would be a nice reversal of fortune for San Jose with Marlowe contributing 48 points, which included his 1,000th career point on November 21st, 2015. Now, while the Sharks didn't win a division, they did still make the playoffs and managed to beat L.A., Nashville, and St. Louis, advancing to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time in team history. And while it's always a great time and an amazing amazing thing for a player to accomplish to even make it to the Stanley Cup Finals, the Sharks had the unfortunate pleasure of matching up against the Pittsburgh Penguins, with them eventually losing the Cup in six games. However, Marlowe would add 13 points in a career-high 24 playoff games. The 2016-17 season would see Marlowe score his first four-goal game in his career, doing so against the Colorado Avalanche on January 23rd, 2017, with that being the result of a natural hat-trick in the third period. Now, Marlowe would also score his 500th career goal against the Vancouver Canucks on February 2nd, 2017. So look at that, taking out milestones. Becoming the 45th player in NHL history to accomplish the feat, as well as the 17th player to do so with his original club. And Marlowe would finish the season with 46 points in a full schedule, while adding four points in six playoff games. Now, this would be not only the last season 
the Sharks would make the playoffs with Marlowe in the lineup, but also be the last season for Marlowe for about two years. As Marlowe signed with Toronto as a free agent on July 2nd, 2017. And normally the story would end here. If it weren't for a comeback. So after two years of trying to win a cup in Toronto, Marlowe would re-sign in San Jose for his second stint with the team on October 9th, 2019. And during the 2019-2020 season, Marlowe would play in his 1500th career game with the San Jose Sharks, becoming the 17th player in league history to play 1,500 games with one team. On January 11th, 2020, Marlowe would play in his 1,700th NHL career game, becoming just the fifth player in league history to play 1,700 games. But not only that, he'd also be the youngest to do so. However, with the Sharks sitting well out of a playoff spot by this point, and Marlowe really wanted to get his name on a Stanley Cup. Marlowe betrayed to the Pittsburgh Penguins on February 4th, 2020, for a conditional third-round pick in 2021, marking his first, stint, first comeback stint, short at 58 games, with Marlowe adding 20 points. And normally the story would end here, if it weren't for a comeback. So after only 12 games with the Penguins, which includes four playoff games, Marlowe would re-sign with the San Jose Sharks for his second or his third stint with the team for the 2020-21 season. And this would also be Marlowe's last season in the NHL, even though the 2021 season was kind of shortened thanks to what was going on. So he only played 56 games, but he played in all of them. And it would be a memorable one, more so for the record that he broke during the season, as during the 2021 season, on April 19th, 2021, Marlowe would break the all-time games played record by playing in his 1,768th NHL game. So just to put a bit of context to that, that record had been around since 1961. And then one game after that, Marlowe would be the fourth player in league history to play in 900 consecutive NHL games. Now, given that we're at this point in his career, you'd expect the kind of numbers you're about to hear. Marlowe would add nine points in a full 56-game schedule. Now, that full schedule streak to go with that 910-game Ironman streak, that, that was 11 straight consecutive seasons of playing every game in the schedule. So Marlowe would finish the 2021 season as a free agent and went unsigned for the 21-22 season. So it was only fitting that on May 10th, 2022, Marlowe announced his retirement from the NHL. And that was a lot of career to go over as I look at the 18-minute mark on my video. Whew. So let's go over some stats. So in his 21 seasons in San Jose, he played 1,607 games, which is a team record, along with his 522 goals, to go with 589 assists, which is not a team record, for, for a team record 1,111 points. In the playoffs, he has a team record of 177 games played, along with a team record 68 goals, to go with 52 assists for a team record 120 points. Everything except the assists. I'm pretty sure I don't need to spell out who has the assists record. As far as NHL records is concerned, he has the most games played by a player at 1,779 games. As far as Shark records is concerned, well, I've already named off six team records. He also owns the records for 161 power play goals, 17 shorthand goals, 101 game winning goals, 3,899 shots, 624 consecutive games, First and so far only Shark with 500 goals. And on February 25th, 2023, he became the first San Jose Shark to have his number retired. So let's go over my own opinion of the guy. So being able to watch this guy develop into the kind of player he became in his entire career from start to finish. 
he was reliable. I mean, not so much just for the longevity of his own career. You needed a goal, he can get you one. You needed a good play to get that goal, he can give you one. Like, the most important man to the Sharks franchise, probably of all time. I mean, he didn't always have, well, he didn't have any 50-goal seasons. He didn't have any 100-point seasons, but he didn't need them. I mean, as soon as Thornton came along, you know, that just seemed to elevate not just Thornton's game, but Marlowe's game. And Thornton helped so many other guys on the team, too. But a solid choice at number two. And it seemed to benefit the Sharks for years, which is always a great thing. That's what you want out of a good draft pick. I mean, it's hard not to think of Sharks without thinking Marlowe. I know the big debate before they even announced they were retiring Marlowe's number was who's the first shark to have their number retired. And there's a whole bunch of names thrown around. Falloon, Whitney, Thornton, Wilson. But I think no matter what your answer was, the only right answer, not just because it happened that way, but the only right answer should have always been Marlowe. Because you think San Jose, you think Marlowe. It's like, it's one and the same. It's the same basket on that one. But a fun player to watch growing up. Hell of a playmaker. And yeah, when you could count on him, when you needed to count on him, he was there. So Couldn't happen to a better guy. I'm glad San Jose finally has their first number out of the way. Whether they have another one coming soon, one can hope, right? Because, I mean, you can't have the number two pick in the 97 NHL entry draft sitting all there by himself without the number one. But let's hope that's a different video for a different day. This is another one of Chess Hockey Shows. I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you're stuck at this point which I hope you are. I did say this was going to be a long one, and I'm not wrong. And I mean, this probably isn't going to be the last retired number of video that I do that's over 20 minutes long. Fair warning, early warning, depending on how you want to call it. But either way, if you enjoy what I'm doing, if you dig my shit, if you just want to say hi, if you want to let me know you were here, give me a thumbs up. The red button. So subscribe all over it. If you haven't hit it yet, Look up. See how close to 200 we are? The goal is 250. Let's get there by the end of the year. So if you haven't hit that red button that says subscribe yet, do yourself a favor. It'll make you feel good. Social that I never use is in the description down below. So moving forward, as far as retired numbers is concerned, I got two more that all I have to do is finish and I can get them done. One of them might be a little bit longer than this one. But either way, in the meantime, in between time, be looking for more videos from Trev. Later.